We have been talking a lot on Locked on Zags about how this team needs rim protection, but does Gonzaga already have the right guy for the role in Caden Perry? Let's discuss. You are Locked on Zags, your daily podcast on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, y'all? Welcome to the Locked On Zags podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host and longtime Gonzaga podcaster, Andy Patton, here to bring you news and updates on all things Zag athletics. Out here at the Oregon coast, for those of you checking the show out on YouTube and noticing a different background, we are talking all things Caden Perry today. We're going to discuss his history up through the three up through the season where he did not play because of injury. We're going to talk about what his role might look like next year. Is he the guy the Zags need to round out that front court rotation? We're also going to discuss what his future with the program might look like as he has a whole bunch of years of eligibility remaining. All sorts of fun stuff here today on the Locked On Zags podcast. We'll start talking about who Caden Perry is for people who maybe need a refresher of a guy who, who really hasn't played much in his Gonzaga basketball career. Perry was a very, very highly touted prospect when he committed to Gonzaga back in 2019. In fact, if you go to 24-7 Sports and look at the top 10 highest rated recruits in Gonzaga basketball history, Caden Perry is still on that list. Unfortunately, his career has not gone the direction that Anybody, including Perry himself, of course, had hoped for. Perry was a four-star prospect out of Battleground, Washington. He was the 52nd ranked player in the class of 2021. Again, that is using 24-7 Sports' composite rankings. He was the second ranked prospect in the state of Washington behind some kid named Paolo Bancaro out of O'Day High School. Of course, Bancaro was also recruited by Gonzaga, ultimately chose to go to Duke, one-and-done player, first overall pick in the NBA draft and was the rookie of the year this past season is on pace to have what will likely be a tremendous professional basketball playing career. Perry was the second best player in the state of Washington that year. He committed to Gonzaga again, way back in 2019. He has been affiliated with his program for a very, very long time. Uh, he drew a lot of comparisons to another legendary Zag in Brandon Clark. Uh, and if you watched his high school tape, you could see why he's six, eight, six, nine bouncy, very athletic block shots with tremendous aggression sent them all the way out of the stands. Not very big high schools out in that battleground area. And he dang near sent those basketballs uh, into the stands with some serious heat on them. A very good low post score, very good shot blocker, really, really high level athlete. And unfortunately it just, it just didn't happen for him. He, he, he suffered a back injury during his senior season of high school and that has kind of been the catalyst for what has been an unfortunately injury riddled career up to this point for Perry. He missed the majority of his senior season of, of high school basketball in 2021, came to Gonzaga during that 21-22 season, was a freshman alongside Ben Gregg. Of course, while Caden Perry was injured and not playing in his senior season at Battleground, Gregg was not only not playing at Clackamas High School where he was from, but he was actually with the Zags. He was able to graduate early because of some of those relaxed COVID-19 rules. He was uh, eligible to join the Zags basically as a high school senior and be on the bench, played 18 games as a uh, pre-freshman, I guess is the best way to put it for Greg. So those two guys were lumped together, but their trajectories pretty much immediately went in different directions for unfortunate reasons for, for Perry there. He, Still ended up getting to play some his freshman year for Gonzaga. He played eight games as a freshman in that 21-22 season. He scored 14 points on seven of nine shooting, 78% from the field. That's excellent. Of course, the sample size is, you don't need to tell me this, but it, you, you don't need me to tell you this, folks, but obviously a very small sample size there. But seven of nine shooting for him, 14 points, 18 boards. He also tacked on one assist and one block in what was 53 total minutes across those eight games. Uh, a couple highlights are, I guess, highlights in quotes for those of you not on YouTube. Uh, he fouled out in five minutes against Alcorn State. That was one of his, I think, his second or third career college game. He played five minutes, uh, committed a whole bunch of fouls, and I think that's kind of 
one of the things we saw from him in that very brief period of time is that he's very energetic, uh, very athletic, but was kind of a little out of control and, and uh, you know, had a hard time controlling his body. And, and this is something that's really common for freshman bigs in general. Shema Karnowski was a foul machine his freshman year. Like it's not uncommon. Perry just never really got a chance to to hasn't up to this point, I should say, gotten that chance to kind of grow out of that. Um, he also had six points and four boards against Central Michigan in 12 minutes. That was a career high for him in, in all three of those categories, 12 minutes, six points, four boards. Uh, and then after December 22nd, he did not play. And the reporting at the time was that it was a foot injury for Perry, a foot injury, an ankle injury, some lingering issues with the back. Ultimately, they just decided to, to shut him down. And, and it was clear at that point by December 22nd that Perry wasn't going to be in the rotation for that season anyway. So it kind of made sense to, hey, like he's he's a little banged up. There's no real reason to rush him back and and try to throw him back in the floor in garbage time minutes and risk him getting further injured. So that logic made a ton of sense. And, and it kind of led Perry into a spot where he could rest, rehab, get healthy, and get ready to come back for the 2022-23 season. Unfortunately, that did not happen either. There was a report in October of 2022 at the Spokesman Review that Caden Perry was good to go. It was written right before Craziness in the Kennel. It had a, uh, an update that Dominic Harris was not quite ready to go, but that Caden Perry was ready to go. And uh, neither player really got much run last season. Dom obviously did play, but not a ton. Caden did not play at all. He redshirted during the 2022-23 season. And initially in my notes, I put medical redshirt, but I do not know for sure. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Ultimately, he redshirted. He, does, he did not cost himself a year of college basketball eligibility last year because he did not play in a single game. Uh, I don't remember seeing him really dressed. Or it never really seemed like he was ever going to play. He and Braden Huff, and we'll talk a lot more about Braden Huff later in the show because those two guys are currently connected in a lot of different ways, but those two guys did not get on the floor at all during the college basketball season last year. Uh, and Perry, it sounds like he did have some off-season surgery uh, after the season. He had some surgery on his back, and he's continuing to try to heal and grow and back injuries. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to pretend I'm a doctor. I'm not going to try to give any kind of timeline indication, anything like that. It's not my area of expertise, and I don't want to give any false information there. But back injuries are tough. Uh, that's the that's the vaguest way I will talk about that. Back injuries are really, really debilitating. And for athletes, you use your back a ton. And, and when it's not at 100%, it's really, really hard to, to play at a high level. Um, I will say a quote. This is a quote from Caden in March of 2023, so just a few months ago. Uh, he had gotten the surgery and he said, quote, this was on Instagram. I've never been more motivated to prove people wrong. I'm going to make sure you all are able to see me on the court next year. Love this. Uh, I hope that there's not a lot of people out there dogging on Caden Perry that he feels like he needs to prove wrong. Uh, I'm enthusiastic about his ability to, to contribute if he's healthy. It's just a matter of if he's going to get healthy. And, and again, I'm not an expert on his medical issues. The staff is kind of the only people that that really have a full grasp on, on whether he's going to be ready this year or not. He is indicating that he expects to be ready this year. And by all accounts, it would be a fantastic player to kind of, it's almost like adding a transfer. You know, we've talked so much on this podcast. You everyday listeners know that I have talked at length about adding a rim protector for next year. I talked a lot about Connor Vanover, who recently committed to Missouri. He is out of the picture. I talked a ton about a handful of other players. Uh, Jesse Edwards was a player connected to Gonzaga for a while. Naheem McCloyd from Florida State was a player connected to Gonzaga for a while. And, and obviously, Anton Watson returning kind of made it so there's less of a need for a player in the front court. Uh, and Caden Perry could end up being that kind of fourth big who steps into that role. And that's really what I want to talk about in the second segment here, because uh, rim protection is still a big need for the Zags. They still don't have any really experienced rim protectors on this roster. But Caden Perry is hell-bent on getting back on the floor, and he could be that guy who fills that role for the Zags. And we're going to talk more about that after a word from today's sponsor, FanDuel. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no-sweat first bet of up to $2,500. That is $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. Maybe you like what you're seeing from Denver and want to bet on them to take home a trophy this year. Or maybe you Zag fans want to place a future bet on our guy Chet Holmgren. He could win Rookie of the Year next year. I love betting with FanDuel because they have great promotions literally every single day. The app is safe, secure, and super easy to use, and you can get paid instantly. There is no better place to bet on the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. 
So right now, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Folks, want to thank all of you for making Locked On Zags your first listen of the day. Shout out to all of those everyday listeners or everyday watchers out there on YouTube. This week on the show, we're going to continue to look at some of Gonzaga's other players on the roster, what their role might look like next season. We're going to continue to keep track of the transfer portal as it becomes relevant for Gonzaga. We're, of course, going to continue to look at Julian Strother, Drew Timmy, their NBA hopes and dreams and aspirations as we see more workouts from them and more scouting reports and mock drafts and all of that good stuff leading towards that NBA draft at the end of the month. But for now, we are going to continue discussing Caden Perry. It's all things Caden Perry here on a Tuesday edition of Locked on Zags. We talked about his history, his unfortunate inability to play last year because of injury. But if Caden Perry is healthy next year, and at this point we have to just operate under that assumption, I'm not going to sit here and spend eight minutes in this segment telling you about what would happen if Caden Perry missed the year because of an injury, because that's just not very much fun. So let's talk about what it might look like if he's healthy and what that role might look like for him. Right now, the clear role that Caden Perry could covet or could encapsulate next year is as the fourth big. He would be behind Anton Watson, who's, of course, returning for his fifth year at Gonzaga. He would behind be behind Wyoming transfer Graham E.K., guy who averaged 19 and 9 uh, in his most recent season at Wyoming, which was not last year, but the previous year. He missed all of last year with an injury as well. And then, of course, behind Ben Gregg, the player that he came into the same recruiting class with, Ben has uh, significantly surpassed him on the depth chart, of course, through no fault of Caden's own. He has been hurt, and Ben has been exceptional. He really broke out in a significant way last year as a stretch four who, who has some defensive intensity and some uh, a, a lot of high motor, high energy in him. Kind of the things that, that Caden was praised for coming out of high school that we just have only gotten to see in very, very small snippets throughout his career. The best case in my mind for Caden Perry next year is a role as the fourth big where he plays 12, maybe 15 minutes per game, uh, and he's used primarily as a defensive sub, as a rim protector. The most likely role for Caden Perry is more like what Efton Reed was last year. And I think it's important context that historically, in the past, Gonzaga's fourth big has been a legitimate role on this roster. I remember Killian Tilly as a true freshman in that 2016-2017 team, the team that went, of course, to the national championship game, Killian Tilly played about 12 minutes per game. That was as the fourth big. He was behind Shemek Karnowski. He was behind Jonathan Williams. He was behind Zach Collins. Now, fourth bigs don't tend to play that much for Gonzaga. Part of that is the Drew Timmy effect. Drew Timmy soaked up so many minutes and played so much in the last four years at Gonzaga that you didn't have a lot of room for a fourth big. When you had Drew Timmy and Chet Holmgren on the same team, you just you weren't going to play your fourth guy. You were going to play those guys as much as you possibly could. And same with last year with Anton Watson's emergence and Ben Gregg's emergence, there wasn't really room for a fourth big, hence why Efton Reed played in 25 games. So he got into pretty much every game for Gonzaga, but he played 4.6 minutes per game. And right now, it feels to me like that's more likely what the fourth big role looks like at Gonzaga. The fourth big role is probably not what it was in 2017 when Killian Tilly played 12 minutes a game. It is probably more like what Efton Reed played, where some games you don't play at all and some games you play just the last few minutes of garbage time. I believe that Caden Perry could play a role as an enforcer slash fouler. Come into the game, play really aggressive on defense. If you pick up a couple fouls, you pick up a couple of fouls. That is okay. Uh, Force the other team to think twice about driving into the paint. Basically, be a guy who protects the rim, who is physical, who's tough, who's demanding, all of that stuff. The Zags don't really have that. Chet Holmgren was an incredible, elite, all-time great shot blocker. Brandon Clark, incredible, elite, all-time shot blocker. All of the same superlatives work for him. But other than that, the Zags have kind of lacked in that rim protection. Drew Timmy was never a rim protector. Anton Watson, elite defensive player. Very, very good on that end of the floor, but not as a rim protector. That's not, and, and you don't want him in that role. He's so valuable as a defensive player out on the perimeter, in the half-court trap, getting steals, using his, his really quick hands and instincts to knock the ball away, get steals, get out in transition, that kind of thing. You don't want him under the basket protecting the rim. That's taking away your most valuable perimeter player and shoving him in a role that he's not as good at. 
I think Ben Gregg could potentially emerge as a rim protector, but he is not there yet. He made significant strides to defensive player last year. Significant. But he's still not really there. Some aspects of rim protection are kind of instinctive and are kind of things you just have. Caden Perry, by all accounts, has that. He had it in high school. We saw glimpses of it in his 53 minutes of college basketball. The best case scenario for Caden Perry next year is that we see more of that. Offensively, I'm not sure we're going to see much from Caden Perry, even if we're talking about a best case scenario. I see him as being a a rim runner, a guy who maybe you get the ball to down on the block. Maybe he gets uh, putbacks, offensive rebounds, that kind of scoring. I don't think there's going to be a lot of set design plays for Caden Perry. I don't think that that's really he's more of a defensive player than an offensive player. And again, we're basing this off of high school tape and eight games of garbage time. Like there's just not a lot of data on Caden Perry to really give us a good indication of who he is, who he can be, what he's capable of, all of that good stuff. Now here's the thing with Caden Perry. We're projecting him into that fourth big role, but he's got competition for that spot. And his competition comes primarily in the form of Braden Huff. Braden Huff was a red shirt last year. Redshirt freshman did not play for the entire season after coming over from Chicago, but he was Mr. Illinois out of high school. He was the best high school player in the state of Illinois before he committed to Gonzaga. Top 100 prospect, barely, in the class of 2023, class of 2022, excuse me. Um, and we I don't really know what we have in Braden Huff. I'll be perfectly honest. We've seen clips of him in high school. We saw him at Craziness in the Kennel. I will say that Anton Watson has talked him up in recent press conferences or press comments. Julian Strother has talked him up in press conversations. I tend to not put a ton of stock into what teammates say about their teammates because they're always going to gas up their teammates, but they were not asked specifically, what do you think about Braden Huff? They were asked about the team next year, and both of them were talking about players that they're excited to see next year, players that are going to be a big part of the team next year. And they mentioned Nolan Hickman, they mentioned Ben Gregg, uh, and then they mentioned Braden Huff. And to me, while I'm not sure that that means a ton, it also doesn't mean nothing. It means something. And there's a reason Braden Huff was so highly touted. He's six foot nine. He can stretch the defense a little bit. Uh, He's he's got a lot of athleticism in him. And and we we just haven't seen it yet. We just haven't seen it yet. The competition for those fourth big minutes between Caden Perry and Braden Huff is going to be very, very fascinating and interesting and fun to watch for me because they're two players that we just don't know a ton about. We know how they've been described. We know what their high school tape looks like. We know what kind of player archetype they are expected to fill. Perry is the enforcer, rim protector, low post score, not an outside shooter. Huff, more of a stretch four, more of a, a kind of a guard and a bigs body type of stuff. Like, But we haven't really seen either of them do it in college. We haven't seen Braden Huff play a single minute of college basketball. And Braden er, and Caden Perry, obviously, only having played those 53 minutes sporadically uh, in a handful of, of garbage time minutes in the early part of two seasons ago. So there's just not a lot of data in terms of what those two guys look like. I expect that if Caden Perry earns the fourth big role next year and Braden Huff is the fifth big or basically not playing at all, that may spell the end of his tenure in Gonzaga. And I hope that's not the case. But and, and Mark Few doesn't make decisions based on that. To be clear, if, if he believes Caden Perry is more equipped to play for this team next year, he's not going to play Braden Huff over him. He's just not. That's not who he is. That's not who he's ever been. That's not who he should be. So that kind of creates an interesting dynamic. If Huff is playing more, what does that mean for Perry? Like One of these two guys is going to be unhappy with the amount of playing time they get next year. There is just no possible way to look around it because we talked about how much the fourth big role has shrank on Gonzaga's roster, the fifth big role is just non-existent. It's just not a role that exists on a regular basis. Can you get garbage time minutes? Sure. Both those guys will get garbage time minutes, assuming they're healthy next year. But there's not necessarily a ton more outside of that really available to either of these players. And that's not even counting freshman Alex Tui and, of course, the South Korean Jun Sok Yo, because both those guys are three, four hybrids. And I think the expectation, especially with Yo, is that he could play more of the three and could potentially, we talked about this a lot on Monday's show. For, so for those of you who who want a full episode dedicated to what the roster, the lineup, the rotation is probably going to look like, Monday's episode is the show for you. And a big part of that conversation was Yo, because Yo is a player in my mind who uh, the, the worst case scenario for him is playing very, very little, like Rui as a freshman. The best case scenario is he plays 25, 30 minutes per game and is like one of the team's best players. I genuinely believe Either of those are possible outcomes for Yo next season. And what that 
what happens there does have an impact on somebody like Caden Perry. If Yo's going to play a lot of minutes at the small ball four, that pretty much takes away any minutes that might exist in the front court. Tui is a player that I think it's very likely possible that he redshirts. It just seems to make the most sense. They don't have a lot of minutes to go around right now. Uh, we're in the post COVID era where you only get four years of eligibility. So there's not really any reason to not use that red shirt for him unless they really feel he's capable of playing right away, which would be excellent. But I suspect it's more likely that he red shirts. He kind of gets a grasp for the American game, uh, you know, his first year in the United States, all that stuff and gets ready to contribute as a sophomore the following year. For Perry, I don't think there's a situation where his role is any bigger than fourth big. I just don't see a scenario where he takes playing time from EK Watson or Ben Gregg. Obviously, of course, there, unless there is an injury, you never hope that you never want that for anybody. EK has dealt with significant injury issues issues in his past. So that is something to watch out for. Watson hasn't been injured in a while, but has, has had it in the past as well. Uh, But if if there's no injuries for those three guys, I don't, it's really hard for me to imagine Perry carving out more than a, a small role behind those guys for next season. So while Caden Perry's role may not be huge next year, he's got a lot of eligibility left. In fact, he might have four years of eligibility left, at least three years left. So what does that mean for his future in Spokane and in a Gonzaga uniform? More on that coming up right after this. All right, segment three. He's still in the patent, still locked on Zags and we are still talking all things Caden Perry here on a Tuesday edition of the Locked On Zags podcast taking place at the Oregon coast right now as I'm recording here for those of you watching on YouTube and we kind of talked about Caden Perry's history from the the superstar at Battleground High School to uh, committing to Gonzaga back in June of 2019 all the way through not getting to play last year we talked about what his role might look like next season 2023-2024 but I want to talk about what his role might look like beyond that. And that's a really difficult conversation to have right now because college basketball rosters are turning over more than NBA rosters these days. There is so much turnover year over year over year that trying to look at what might happen after this upcoming season, nearly impossible to do. But we're going to give our absolute best shot at it. I think Caden Perry has, as of right now, not including the 23-24 season, he might have four years of eligibility left. If they count him as a medical redshirt for that first year when he only played eight games and he redshirted as well last year, he could still have four more seasons of college basketball, be a six-year guy. Whether he wants to take all of them, of course, remains to be seen, but I believe that he would get waivers for both of his first two seasons and would be eligible to play four more years after that. Looking past next season to the 2024-2025 season, which, man, that makes me feel old, even thinking about that season coming up. This is what we know for sure. Anton Watson's not going to be on that team. That's it. That's all we know for sure. (laughs) Anton Watson will not have any more eligibility. He will be gone after this upcoming season. After that, Ben Gregg will be coming into his senior year. I don't expect him to be a guy who jumps to the NBA after this year. I don't expect him to be a guy who jumps into the transfer portal after this year. Either of those things could, in theory, happen. But I expect Ben Gregg would be back for his senior year. Graham E.K. would be a senior as well. Much more difficult to project what that might look like for him. Does he have a good enough season this year to go pro? Does he decide to enter the transfer portal? Do injuries continue to impact him? Hard to say. But by all accounts, Graham E.K. could be back for a senior year as well in Spokane. Jun Suk Yo would be a junior. He's going to be a sophomore this upcoming season is what I have been told and what I have heard, uh, which would mean that he would be a junior that year. Again, is he back? Is he playing more three? Is he playing the four? What kind of role he has still to be determined. Braden Huff would be a redshirt sophomore going into that year, again, assuming he's still around. And then Alex Tui would be a traditional sophomore or a redshirt freshman, depending on if he redshirts this upcoming season. All of those guys could be back. You could have Greg, E.K., Yo, Huff, and Tui all on the roster in the 2024-25 season. You might also have none of them. That would be very unlikely, to be clear. But you might have none of them. You might have one of them, two of them, three. Any combination of those guys could be back. Beyond that, of course, Gonzaga will probably add players in the transfer portal. They might add incoming freshmen who are expected to contribute right away in that 2024-25 season. There is so much that could change between now and then. But I will say this. If Caden Perry plays a role next year, if it's a fourth big role, even if it's five and a half, four and a half minutes per game, like Efton Reed last year, if it's a little more than that, if it's even less than that, but it's still 
he's playing. He plays in 20 games. He plays in 15 games. He plays three minutes per game in 15 games. Let's say it's that. That's very little. But if he plays at all next year and looks healthy and shows some flashes, I think we could see a jump in that 24-25 season. Because at the very least, you'll need to, rep- you'll need to replace Anton Watson's minutes. And I don't think all of those guys will be back. I don't know exactly what the combination would be, but if Yo and Tui are both traditionally playing the three and Watson's gone, you have Greg, EK, and Huff all mixed into playing time there. If Perry looks better than any of those guys, he could be not necessarily, I'd be kind of surprised if he stepped into a starting role uh, unless he does some really tremendous stuff this upcoming season, but you never know. Caden Perry is a fascinating player to me right now and Gonzaga's kind of mix right now we we talk so much about the front court we've talked a lot about Anton Watson we've talked a lot about having to replace Drew Timmy and what that all looks like but but Caden Perry's upside is such that he could be a player who contributes next year and really blossoms into a a big time player in 2024-25 starting playing 30 minutes is probably the very very high end of outcomes for Caden Perry in his what would be his red shirt sophomore season, I guess, is how that would probably uh, look on paper. But he's a guy who the upside is there. The talent is there. I'll also say this, and I mentioned it earlier. Back injuries are really, really difficult to fully come back from. Being 100% coming off of back surgery is not easy to do. It is not easy for six foot eight, six foot nine human beings who have long, big back muscles and just they move fast. They, it's hard to recover from that. It's hard for your body to be 100% after having that kind of surgery done. Again, don't know the full extent of what has happened to Caden Perry and where he is at and what his rehab looks like and all that stuff. There are people who are paid a lot of money on Gonzaga's staff who deal with that kind of thing. But if he does, if he is able to get back to a playing form, if it's 90% of who he was in high school, whatever it may be, the skills that he has, the athleticism, the bounciness, the shot blocking ability, the ability to finish around the rim, the strength, there is a role for him at Gonzaga. Unquestionably, in my mind, there's a role for him at Gonzaga. Is it a big role next year? Probably not. Could it be a bigger role in 24, 25? Absolutely. I really look forward to seeing what, uh, what Caden Perry does this upcoming season. I hope sincerely that he is healthy, that he is able to play, and then he gives us good minutes. I don't think it'll be a ton, but I think it'll be a role. And I hope that we get to see him just be the basketball player that he was in high school. Have fun, bounce around, jump, be athletic, be that guy, because back injuries are so debilitating. And I just sincerely hope that it's not something that forever impact. I don't, I hope Braden, uh, Braden, I hope Caden Perry does not become a, like a huge Gonzaga. What if, because at this point he is, he is a, what if, What if he hadn't had that back injury? What if he, you know, what if he took minutes from Ben Gregg early on? Like what could have happened there? And and it's a fair question, but I hope he can prove us wrong next year and show, Hey, I still am that guy, or I'm still even maybe not a hundred percent that guy, but I'm close enough to being that guy that you can see why I was a top 10 recruit in Gonzaga basketball history. Why I was the second best player in the state of Washington. Why I had all of those accolades coming into this program. That's what I hope for Braden or for Caden Perry. Maybe it doesn't happen this year. Maybe it's the year after that, but heck, he's been patient enough. Maybe he's got to wait one more year, but man, the the results could be really, really epic uh, if he puts it all together. All right, that is going to do it for us today. We got more fun stuff like this coming up. We'll talk more about Braden Huff. We'll talk more about Dusty Stromer, Alex Tui, those new guys coming in, the guys who are maybe on the peripheries of being rotation players next season, what all of that might look like for next season right here on the Locked On Zags podcast. It is available wherever you get your podcast. It is also available on YouTube. Go hit that subscribe button there if you have not done so yet. More fun stuff coming your way later this week. For now, though, go Zags.